Psychedelics like LSD and psilocybin are usually known for their hallucinogenic, insightful, and therapeutic effects. They alter perception, emotion, creativity, and more, while also impairing some aspects of normal functioning. But a different way of using these drugs, called microdosing, has been growing in popularity, and there are now countless people who attribute positive effects on mood, anxiety, and cognition to this practice. Microdoses are sub-hallucinogenic, typically one-tenth to 1 20th of a standard dose. For LSD, that's about 10 to 25 micrograms. High doses are taken infrequently because of tolerance and the sheer intensity of the experience. But microdoses are less impairing, exhausting, and powerful, so people can take them every three to five days. The anecdotal reports are not always positive, but enough people have reported benefits to generate a lot of interest. Though, the hype and excitement around microdosing has grown much faster than formal research on the topic. We're decades into psychedelic research, but that research has centered around large doses, so we know very little about microdosing. The lack of blinded, placebo-controlled research has caused some people to wonder whether microdosing is really as efficacious as its proponents claim, because it's meant to be a background drug, or at most, an alternative to drugs like caffeine and nicotine, it's possible a portion of the subjective effects stem from the placebo effect. The placebo response could be especially problematic with this kind of drug use because people are taking a substance that is known to have very powerful effects, thereby affecting their expectations and experience. A couple microdosing papers have been published in recent years, but they have either relied on subjective reports online or in observational settings, or they have researched effects that are minimally relevant to users. But a study published earlier this year by researchers at the University of Chicago has given us a look at the psychological, cognitive, and physiological effects of microdosing in a controlled setting. A recent review of the microdosing literature found four scientific papers in which users reported benefits like improved mood, energy, and cognition, along with greater open-mindedness and a reduction in negative attitudes. An uncontrolled study of 900 people recruited through social media found microdosing was correlated with greater open-mindedness, reduced negative emotionality, reduced incidence of dysfunctional attitudes, and increased creativity. Among the microdosers in that study, 65% used LSD and 28% used psilocybin. One of the only controlled studies revealed an effect on time perception, but that's fairly irrelevant for most people who are curious about microdosing. There have been more studies using animals, where small doses of drugs like DMT and psilocin show promise in improving mood and anxiety. But it's not clear whether the more substantial benefits of high-dose experiences can be replicated with small, frequent doses. And there are some conflicting results, such as research showing animals are more anxious on a low dose of DMT, and that chronic DMT microdosing might have a negative effect on metabolism. One of the exciting possibilities is that sub-hallucinogenic doses will improve learning and flexibility in one's thinking, helping to overcome rigid thought patterns. But evaluating that hypothetical effect is difficult. As of 2019, thousands of anecdotes support microdosing being relatively low risk and potentially useful but we know very little about how frequent dosing affects the body, given that's not how psychedelics have historically been used, so I think caution is certainly warranted. Though microdosing is intended to be something you can integrate into your daily life, it should not be combined with the driving and other activities that require a high level of functioning to keep yourself and others safe. Because we do not know how strong its potential impairment is, and some people do experience cognitive and perceptual disturbances, either due to accidentally using too much or because of a personal sensitivity to impairing effects, it cannot be considered safe to drive. 20 healthy people were given placebo in three doses of LSD, 6.5 micrograms, 13 micrograms, and 26 micrograms. They had to be mentally healthy and free of substance use disorders, and they were also told not to use drugs in the days surrounding the tests, with the exception of caffeine and nicotine, which were allowed before and after the sessions. Some had never used psychedelics before, though the majority reported using LSD, MDMA, psilocybin, or mescaline at least once 
once in the past. Neither the participants nor the researchers knew what was being administered during a given session, and the participants were told they could potentially receive a placebo, sedative, stimulant, or hallucinogen. LSD was given early in the morning, followed by evaluations of the subjective, cardiovascular, and cognitive effects. There was also a follow-up mood questionnaire to fill out 48 hours later. The microdoses could be felt at 13 and 26 micrograms, but not at 6.5. And at 13 micrograms, the effects were fairly unremarkable based on responses to a questionnaire looking at different types of drug effects, namely those akin to amphetamine, morphine, LSD, or sedatives. The 13 microgram dose caused no significant change on any of those scales, while 26 micrograms did yield a significant response on the LSD scale. Similar results were seen on the profile of mood States questionnaire, which consisted of 72 questions related to sensations of anxiety, depression, anger, vigor, fatigue, confusion, friendliness, and elation. No effects occurred at 6.5 and 13 micrograms, and the only major effect with 26 micrograms was an increase in ratings of vigor, with a lack of effects on measures of elation, depression, anger, fatigue, and confusion. On the altered states of consciousness questionnaire, which is a common way to capture sensations associated with psychedelic and mystical experiences, no effects were observed at 6.5 micrograms. But at the higher doses, there were dose-dependent increases on the experiences of unity, blissful state, impaired control and cognition, and changed meaning of percepts measures, trends towards an increase in scores for spiritual experience, insightfulness, and complex imagery were seen, but those did not reach significance. And there was also no effect on the disembodiment, anxiety, elementary imagery, or audiovisual synesthesia measures. During the experiment, the participants were asked to guess which kind of drug they had received, and their responses demonstrate how the feeling of a microdose can be hard to pin down. For example, at 6.5 micrograms, zero people said hallucinogen, nine said placebo, and the rest said stimulant, sedative, opioid, or cannabinoid. A couple people correctly guessed hallucinogen at 13 micrograms, but nine still said placebo, and a few others said stimulant or sedative. And even at 26 6 micrograms, only 6 said hallucinogen, while 6 said stimulant, 2 said sedative, 3 said cannabinoid, 1 said opioid, and 2 said placebo. Based on these responses, there is a perceptible effect at common microdoses, but the effects are not clearly defined like they would be at recreational doses, though most people do end up feeling like they are in some way energized, activated, or altered in a psychedelic-like way, especially at 26 micrograms. A dual NBAC test and a digit symbol substitution test test were used to evaluate changes in working memory and cognition. With the dual NBAC, people are shown shapes or letters for a few seconds, and then they must respond when they see the same shape or letter a certain number of stimuli in the future. No LSD microdose caused any significant improvement on working memory in this test. Performance on the digit symbol substitution test relies upon visual spatial ability, response time, and attention. Participants are given nine keys with symbols corresponding to the numbers one through nine, and when shown a series of numbers, they must enter the corresponding symbols. So the outcome measure is how many correct symbols are provided in a 90 second period. Again, LSD caused no improvement on this test. Real world applications of cognition are much different than these lab tests. So although microdosing did not have a measurable cognitive enhancing effect, we cannot dismiss anecdotes about improved performance in day to day life or in particular real world tasks. But I think these findings should make us a little more skeptical of cognitive enhancement claims, especially considering how inadequate we can be at judging our own performance. In addition to the placebo effect, real changes in mood or energy can make people think their cognition has improved when it hasn't. And that's why more objective measures of cognitive ability are helpful. Moving to creativity, no benefit was observed on the remote associates task, in which convergent thinking is tested by showing people three words and having them come up with a related word. Emotional effects were tested with the emotional images task, where subjects rate images that have a positive, negative, or neutral valence. The researchers thought microdosing would cause people to identify more images as positive, considering people report beneficial effects on mood, and a happy mental state can correlate with perceiving people or things in a more positive light. However, no effects were observed at 6.5 or 13 micrograms, and at 26 micrograms there was a trend towards a small 
decrease in positive ratings. But overall, it seems that LSD microdosing had little to no impairing effect on creativity or one's ability to interpret emotions. All doses had a largely benign effect on physical measures. No dose affected temperature or heart rate, while a modest increase in systolic blood pressure was seen with 13 and 26 micrograms, and an increase in diastolic blood pressure occurred at 26 micrograms. Going by the 11 people who completed all of the 48-hour follow-ups, microdosing had no significant effect on mood a couple days after the sessions. The results show LSD microdosing is associated with demonstrable changes in functioning. Small doses can alter subjective experience in a psychedelic-like manner, which is encouraging since this might be a way to help people change how they view the world and interact with it, which appears to be an important part of how some antidepressants work. Even with the highest dose, people had a difficult time guessing which drug they received. An equal number said hallucinogen and stimulant, suggesting low doses have a vaguely defined activating effect. That property could be especially prominent with LSD, because microdosers frequently report it has a more stimulating effect than psilocybin, and it's known to have a more promiscuous pharmacology than other psychedelics. This study did not support the popular claim that LSD microdosing enhances cognitive performance, and even though these results are not definitive, the idea that it should be grouped with the nootropics is not strongly supported. In fact, microdosing may have the greatest effect in different areas. Instead of being a coffee or Adderall replacement, it could be a tool for improving mental health. It's also important to see if people with a depressive or anxious baseline state respond differently to microdosing. The most glowing reports could conceivably be from people with mental health issues. If so, those effects would be difficult to detect in a small study of healthy people. Microdosing is still an understudied topic, so hopefully the research that's currently in progress will give us a better understanding of what microdosing can do and who it's best for. If you would like to learn more about this topic, you can visit the TDC website page, linked in the description. TDC is a listener-funded resource, so your support is what allows this content to exist. If you want to donate, you can do so through Patreon, PayPal, or Bitcoin. Donation details are available in the description and at thedrugclassroom.com support. Your support is greatly appreciated.